Hello, this is Siri, and this is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 92, for Monday, July 9th. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Thanks for the introduction, Siri. We'll get back to you in just a little bit. Technology is moving forward at blazing speeds. Most of the science fiction that I grew up with in the early 60s and 70s is a reality today. We can talk to our phones intelligently, and most of the time they'll answer us intelligently. I'm still here, and I heard what you said. But when it comes to processing 911 calls, we're still very much in the dark ages from a network and technology perspective. Sure, in my days as a dispatcher back in the early 80s in sleepy little Sparta, New Jersey, we logged our daily incidents in a huge book called The Blotter and hand-typed each complaint on an IBM Selectric 2 typewriter in triplicate. A few years later, we finally moved to the Lear system, which introduced smaller handwritten cards that were punched on a time clock. The only computer that existed in the station was an IBM 3270 mainframe terminal and teletypewriter. That was used for DMV and driver's license lookups, as well as being the source for interagency teletypes. That's right, no email yet. The two operator positions, of which only one was ever staffed, took care of 15 phone lines, seven radio frequencies, and a CB radio for three separate municipalities for police, fire, and EMS. Today, that center still exists, although the number of positions has increased to six, and they handle several more municipalities as well as cellular emergency calls for the county. On a recent visit, I noticed one thing that had only slightly changed. After some 30 plus years, the information flow remained almost identical. People who needed help would dial 911, in my days they had to call a seven digit local number, their call would be answered and information about the incident and its location would be collected and the appropriate response unit would be dispatched. What had changed and changed dramatically was the amount of contextual information that was arriving with the caller. Any alley information being presented with the call, integration with computer-aided dispatch software, and GIS mapping applications. Phase 1, Phase 2 cellular location automatically being entered into the RMS or records management system. Despite all of this technology that allowed the call takers and dispatchers to do their job efficiently, there was still one squeak in the wheel that needed to be greased. Directly in front of the station is a four-lane major highway. Like any other roadway, it has its fair share of motor vehicle accidents. Unfortunately, a single motor vehicle accident would most likely generate 10 to 15 911 calls from passing motorists. The problem with this is that the math just doesn't work. 15 calls simultaneously entering a center with only two of their six positions staffed, which is based on statistically normal call volume, is only going to be able to answer two of the callers, leaving 13 callers receiving constant ringing, a recorded message stating that their call will be answered in the exact order it was received, or ultimately, a busy signal. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a resident is experiencing chest pain and dials 911, only to get the exact same call treatments. This is where intelligence in the network and next generation 911 advanced call routing can step in to provide a little assistance. Once the system understands that there's a motor vehicle accident at a particular milepost on the highway, intelligent routing can take calls from that immediate area and provide them with specialized call handling. An intelligent dynamic IVR system could advise callers that are in close proximity to a known event of special instructions. Your location is within close proximity to a known motor vehicle accident. Please stay online and we will be with you shortly. Your telephone number has been recorded. If you want to disconnect, we will call you back to verify your information. People that choose to stay on the line would be routed to one of the two available call takers. But one of those call takers would be reserved for calls that do not match the location of a known incident, such as the motor vehicle accident. Only while no other calls were coming into the system would they assist in dealing with calls that related to that accident. This is the kind of intelligent call routing, based on analytical guidance from known data, can be used to streamline the old model of your call will be answered in the exact order it was received. Is this unique to a 911 center? No, not hardly. This intelligent call routing model has existed for decades in the commercial space. It's been tested, hardened, and put through its paces 
from a call volume perspective in some of the world's largest contact centers and financial institutions around the world. Next Generation 911 will provide the underlying architecture and additional information from the call origination device or network that will make intelligent call routing in the 911 center the next evolution in call handling technology. Ultimately increasing efficiency, lowering operational expense, and providing a higher level of service to callers in need of help. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?